Okay. Well, um, I think it's going on your channel. So yeah. you, you re- probably when, should when you're ready, le- lead what, us in. <laughs> or what you can do is you can go, hello. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you are on the wrong channel. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <That's coming off. laughs> Sorry, we have a, what a limp, limp microphone stand here. It's a good it's like start. Subaru sun visors. <laughs> Floppy sun visor syndrome. Let's start there. <laughs> uh, hello, uh, you're on the wrong channel. Um, this is actually Hannes's channel. Hi, guys. Um, I'm sure most of you will know sit, sitting next to me. Chair, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. What a day, eh? What, what is this called? Do you know yet? Um, I'm, actually, I do. Um, <laughs> you know, there's no more of these books for sale, so this is not promotional. But Cranked Up Confessions of a Petrol Head. I think Confessions of a Petrol Head actually... I like that. ...actually works for what we want to do here. And it's nice. It ties up with your history. Mm. And that's actually, that's Hannes's book. I mean, he, he wrote that how many years ago now? I don't know. And that's your car in the front cover, which you've just bought back. Well, and two which years ago. Which you're now going to drive <laughs> down from Joburg with no air con. <laughs> <laughs> and at the moment, no carburetor. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Confessions of a Petrol Head is, it, I think... A little bit of wine will help <laughs> <laughs> and that's primarily the reason i think why this won't work on the cars channel no so i think it's important to point out that usually on a friday afternoon hannes and i and some of our colleagues will have a glass of wine today mm-hmm. it is thunder child by springfield lovely wine which i have decided is the name of hannes's subaru Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it spitted fire, apparently. Yes. No, it did. It spat fire when I was standing behind it. And now it's spitting water. <laughs> fire and water. Just fire needs and some, Just needs some earth to fall out of one of the crevices and you got all the elements. There. Well, a little bit of that fell out. I, I, I got some leaves and uh, spider webs and um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that car looks like it had a rough life. So you now have... You've got the Opel GT, mm. the Citroen DS, and sort of. the Op- and the Subaru SVX. Yes. And then you have some like normal cars for commuting and well, one. that sort of thing. Yeah. The Ortega. The Suzuki Ortega. Yeah. The least What's left of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, if, if anyone wants to know what the Suzuki, my Suzuki Ortega looks like, look, look at an Uber Suzuki Ortega. I, I had an Uber Suzuki and I loved that car because it went through hell. It went through a flood. It was in five accidents, one of which was a major accident. And kudos to Outsurance because they paid us out before we'd even paid one premium to them. It happened between me insuring the car and the first premium being paid. It was a 55,000 rand accident and insurance paid out. No questions asked. So yeah. don't mind giving them a punt for that. But, um, but your, that your car... Suzuki never met my wife. It didn't go through my wife. <laughs> okay, well, you know, you can't watch this podcast. But, uh, <laughs> no, but so my Suzuki did 300,000 Ks in four years. And the only thing that stopped working was the front window. And mm-hmm. it could have just been the switch, you know. Yes. Uh, it was it was honestly one of the best cars I've ever owned. I never even drove it, not once. It was an Uber car in Joburg. Yeah, I, I guess the Suzuki for me is is kind of like a follow on of my Daihatsu purchasing decisions. It's uh, when when I buy for the family, I look at very, I look at it very at it very clinically, very uh, no emotions. efficient. No emotions. Yeah. So when I park the car for the first night in the garage, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just do its job. <laughs> it's, it's it's in for a rough ride, <laughs> and uh, it needs to be reliable, and it needs to be Japanese probably, <laughs> and increasingly have more seats. So that's where we are. Um, but there's but something it's, it's serving us very well. There's something about those Indian market cars because I think initially we derided them, um, maybe wrongfully so, but it, it they were a soft target. But actually, they're pretty robust, those cars. They're built for a very harsh environment, and they survive in SA pretty well, from what I can tell. Some of them, yeah. 
there's, there is a, there are varying levels <laughs> of, of quality. Definitely, I, I think maybe Honda regrets mm. building the Jazz in India. It was built in India, right? Or was it Thailand? Uh, Thailand. Yeah. S- sorry. Sorry, yeah. Honda. Sorry, in, in, sorry, Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, India. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I still drive test cars, thankfully. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk about your cars for a little bit because uh, you made a late Finish start on on, on 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 classic car ownership. But you've my word, you've uh, <laughs> rapidly caught up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, four four of them for my sons. Um, Lexus LS four hundred was the most recent purchase. First purchase was a supercharged. 1990 Mazda MX-5, nice. Which I had some connection which to. Which no my, aircon. Yes, no aircon as you experienced yes. today. Um, just supercharger, charge a wine to keep you distracted from the fact that you're boiling to death. Um, and then I actually sold that car to pay off the E39 M5. But then the guy I sold it to, I told him it was a very reluctant sale. I said, if you ever want to sell this car please phone me first which he did six months later he had driven it three times he had two two other miatas and 20 other porsches or something and he said do you want your car back and i said yes please and i phoned the bank and i said i need to buy my car back please <laughs> and I, said, I didn't have the money and i bought my car back and then somewhere in the middle of all of that uh the rx7 came along and that was just a pure that was pure motoring lust like that's the only way i can describe it i just for me, it's just one of the best looking cars ever. And and I knew their reputation. And I said to myself, well, if it breaks, then I just stare at it and I'll be happy. It's and sculpture. Eh? Yeah. And I was right. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit like the DS as well. A lot of people try to talk me out of buying a Citroen DS. And it's been the most reliable touch wood, uh, classic car that I've owned. But I, your, I, I, your Citroen is amazing. I don't, I don't, know, if, I don't know if anyone knows, but I did... A thousand miles in Hannes' Citroen, and it was pretty much flawless. The worst thing was that it had no air con, so I had to keep the windows open. So we had two B attacks. That was probably the worst it's thing that happened, happened in the happened Citroen. To me. But <laughs> a thousand miles in a 55 year old car, him. Hey? I don't know, my mathematics are a little bit wobbly. Yeah. Now. So it's a 67 model, it's quite yeah. old. So it's 10 years yeah. older than me, so it's. No, that car impresses me every day. It yeah. really does, the DS. It's beautiful. But I think the thing that you touched on there is um, an, an, an advice that I can give petrol agents is never sell a car you bought because you liked it or mm. loved it. Yeah, I know. I learned that lesson the hard way. Every, the, the day I dropped off that MX-5, it was horrible. It was one of the worst days of my car ownership life, of my whole car career. And then the day I got it back was one of the best days. And all the days in between, I was just really just upset that I didn't have it anymore and then worried that it was getting damaged and it's the same yeah yeah uh, the, uh, the the Opel GT I, I bought back in what was it now just just as COVID kind of hit I haven't seen it since and it's kind of oh yeah it's stuck in Joburg yeah. stuck in Joburg yeah well the Opel GT I mean I don't know much about it were, were they was quite a limited numbers car no, they made uh, a decent number of them. It it was quite popular in America as well. It was sold through the Buick dealerships. So actually, I think most of them ended up in the States. And that's where I could... How many in SA do you think? So nobody knows. Um, you couldn't buy it from an Opel dealer. You had to go... It, it was either Williams Hunt or Reed's. Oops. <laughs> so this this is um let's let's take let, let's take that call yes. because Hannes's car is currently Hello. <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Are you? <laughs> yeah, is it ready? Okay, I'll be there shortly. Okay, okay sorry, can you jump start it for me so long? <laughs> oh, is it started? Yeah, we can't Okay, I'll be there shortly. Thank you. Oh, it started with our jumpers. It started with our jumpers. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Progress. Thunder Child is alive. Okay. I'll see you shortly. Thank you so much. So, bye. 
Wait, we'll have to cut this podcast short. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is super is alive. Look, um, I don't know. I, I would like to see how long it will idle before it starts pissing water all over the floor again. But Yo, you've had a day, hey? <laughs> I, I, I think my favorite part of the day was that the, the oil filter on your car, which, which they ordered specially for you, didn't fit. And then they made a plan and they found an identical one made in Germany for the Hyundai i10. <laughs> it's not a great... Yeah, I love I, that. Mm, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> it's not something I will tell somebody over a bri about my car, to be honest. And the fact that it, was, <laughs> that it has... We'll edit this n- part n- out. Nissan n- n- MP300 <laughs> brake pads, no, you, which I, I don't know. I still don't know what I'm going to be charged for this, but I just want to add... Maybe don't buy brake pads and discs from Subaru. <laughs> <laughs> but I think today, with your with your experience now, so so the Subaru brake pads from Subaru are going to cost you eight grand. Cost you a fraction of that for the identical mm-hmm. part. But they really. also want eight grand for, for the, the discs. discs, right? And they just skimmed your discs, so they saved the discs. But what I learned from from your experience today is that sometimes with classics. It is tricky, but sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you find the yes. perfect oil filter and sometimes you find, you know, and, and, and I think there's a lot of fear with classic collection, but it's not that bad. Like when my, when my, um, so the power steering pump went on my Lexus and so began the great pump hunt of 2022 and, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I, I, I found one that was being scrapped. The guy wanted 15 grand. We sent the steering rack off to be recon so long because that's where the leak was. And uh, phoned Lexus, 20,000 rand for a pump, which is exactly a third of what I paid for the entire car. And then I went on Amazon. There was two pumps available. One was, one was made in the US, one was made in China. The Chinese one was suspiciously cheap. The US one wouldn't ship to SA. So you bought so the paid, Chinese one? Yeah, so I bought the only one that was available. The wine. Yeah, yes. And now I have this moaning Chinese pump in my Lexus. <laughs> Every time you sort of plug, it's like, mm, 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 well, like maybe you should order two. Subtle, I nearly did order two. But but what was so impressive was I went um, on Amazon.com. I paid for it. I paid an extra 20 It was $100, 1600 bucks. I paid $20 for express shipping. It was at my front door in six days from America. And went in the Lexus and it's been fine ever since. I very nearly bought two just to hedge my bets. But, um, you know, so, so sometimes it, you know, if you want to keep these old cars on the road, you have to just, you know, get a bit creative. Get, I think you get you, some you missing also, brakes. Yeah, yeah, you need to build a network as well of <laughs> yeah. people who know things. Um, I, I learned today that, you know, one of the major concerns with Subaru SVX ownership is that at some point the gearbox is guaranteed to fail. Oh, nice. That's exciting. That is, uh, because at the time when Subaru built it, that engine was so powerful, they didn't have a... That was the only gearbox that they thought could handle the torque, but actually it couldn't. And So oh you, you you can expect about 120,000 Ks out of it, and then oh dear. it goes. So my car's got over 200,000 Ks on it. I don't know. On the original a, gearbox? Uh, uh, well, this is the thing. <laughs> I, I don't know, but what Alec found out today looking underneath the car is that that car's gearbox has been done so it's already had the failure ah okay so it's like a ah okay you see maybe i'm in for number two soon but you know um another part of classic car ownership you might get lucky and the guy before you fix the problem (laughs) (laughs) and then you benefit from their pain (laughs) but i also i think uh, you know hannes and i have been quite lucky because i'm this guy reached out to me on Insta and then we met up and his name's Alec. He owns a great workshop out in um, Montague called Munich's Performance Center. Check them out on Instagram. And he really looks after us. I mean, he does all my cars. My RX-7's with him at the moment. I'm trying to fix that. That yes. What's that, wrong with that? Oh, that car tests my patience. Well, the first thing's wrong wrong with it is me because yesterday I was pushing it out of the office and I, revert, and I pushed it into my colleague's Porsche. <laughs> I think I, th- I think maybe we're setting up this podcast wrong. I, th- I think what we need to have is like constant CCTV cameras in the office and just record nonstop because we would cut the show together. It's like man, a comedy of errors most days. I think I lear- also learned. I've learned a lot this week. Yesterday I learned don't 
push a car backwards by yourself with no one spotting you. I mean, I had the door open and Justin's 928S was just there. And then I heard... Mm, I heard it as well. Yeah. It and sounded then I was expensive. Like, yeah, it did sound very expensive. Thankfully, though, the 928 bump is plastic and it sort of moved with the force and then all there is is a, is a tiny tiny scratch which i will fix for justin i mean it's not not nice to damage someone's car that was a terrible terrible feeling but anyway jump started the rx7 it's it's had this intermittent issue where on full boost it just cuts cuts the spark and it feels like you've driven through a shed like it's just you're going it's full boosting there's all 320 kilowatts are coming out of that engine and then Bah! it's like this the whole car shakes it's very violent and quite scary and it sounds like it sounds very expensive so so alex troubleshooting this for me um so driving to alec yesterday so i jump jump started the car using an rs3 which was we should take a photo and a photo of that Thank and then, <laughs> no, nothing never mind and then we <laughs> <laughs> anyway so the only way to get into alex's shop is to do a, a right hand a right u-turn on montague drive which is one of the most busiest hellish Terrible horrible road, yeah. industrial roads in cape town and this thing dies midway through the u-turn and i roll over an intersection on the, the actual where the stop is painted i'm now on the stop with three cars trying to get out of that intersection guys start hooting car won't start battery's dead it's not the most inconspicuous car <sighs> no so my first my first day of RX-7 ownership was being pushed back into the office because I flooded the engine. And then to yesterday was being pushed into Alex's workshop by his mechanics because the battery was dead. Anyway, we've replaced the battery, so that, prob <laughs> that problem's gone. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to run and save my Subaru from overheating, uh, catching on fire or something. <laughs> um, but we can continue. Yes, I think uh, this has been fun. Let's have, um, a, wine, let's have a um, refill break. Okay, should we pause? Yes. I'm going to pause right. and pick it up. Yeah, why okay. not? All right, let's do that. All right, part two. <laughs> part two. How's your SVX? Uh, bonnet open and um, looking for a long extension lead at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Got one for you. It's a bit like an EV. Here, at the, though, we're so busy it's, using it's, it. it's a bit like an EV at the moment. <laughs> but its um, temperature gauge is steady and there's no yeah. steam coming out of it. So, okay, so wait. Timeline of events. The if car I went in for brakes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, did okay, a, you did an oil change. We can do the timeline a little bit further back. <laughs> The car went in for a wash. <laughs> <laughs> and there was no noises. And uh, you actually drove the car back and you said yes. to me you wanted to comment on how quiet the car is. It was ran beautifully. No yeah. problems. Yeah. And then on the Saturday, I decided, okay, I'm going to have a nice drive out to Cam's Bay. And when I pulled out of here, it, looked, it, it felt like the wheels are going to fall off the car. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. Well, no warning signs, no squeaks before, just from zero noise to metal on metal rocks grating sound. Anyway, so it is metal on metal. It was metal on metal. Yeah, Alex, Alex yeah. Um, uh, chief guy there made me laugh. He said, he said to me, it wasn't that the car was making a noise. It was that there was no brakes. <laughs> I don't know. I, I drove it quite enthusiastically around the Camps Bay area, um, along the coast. It was very noisy when I braked, but still stopped. So. <laughs> just the the, cal the, the the brake shoe just digging into the disc, basically. Well, the, the, like the pads basically broke in half. Yo. Yeah. And I think they were sort of no, like vibrating. Whatever. Anyway, it was a disaster. We, got, we went there for brakes. Then became the hunt for brakes, which nearly gave me a heart attack when Subaru told me what the brakes would cost. 16,000 Rand for a set of front discs and a set of front pads. Not and even all four corners? No, just fronts. Oh my goodness. Actually 17,000 Rand. <laughs> <laughs> it's important. Yeah, it's important, these things. 
And um, the guy asked me, so yeah, are they available for order from Japan? Can you put through the order? And I said, no, thank you. And um, Oh, they weren't even in the country. No, no, you no. You have to wait for them to it, get it, your... It would, oh, be, it, would, it would take a few you weeks. You would have driven your car in 2023. Well, it wouldn't be the <laughs> first time that I don't drive one of my cars for such a long time. But uh, yeah, anyway, so we took it to Alec. Uh, Alec obviously knows what he's doing, so he found alternative ways which I still don't know how much it will cost. <laughs> but I'm hopeful it's less than 17,000 rand. <laughs> and uh, changed the fluids and had a look under the car, found some rust, but mostly everything seems fine. And I drove it to have it washed for the show tomorrow. And it ran beautifully until I stopped it at the car wash and people started running away from the car because they thought it was going to explode. <laughs> because it was just a cloud <laughs> of what looked like smoke, but it was actually steam, we think. <laughs> um, so Alec had to drive in Friday afternoon traffic to come and try Shame. and figure out what it is. But we still don't know, and he'll drive the car tomorrow, and if it blows up, then it blows up, I guess. And I don't think you could have anyone better driving your car tomorrow. I don't know. The last I heard of him speaking to his friends is he's going to have fast drive tomorrow <laughs> you'll get there before you i think <laughs> yeah shame he's good like that i mean yeah. he literally came out dropped everything came out to look at your Definitely, car yeah. so when they now they just think just it like basically urinated all over itself and now it's what just gonna i don't know <laughs> just right now it's fine <laughs> self-healing oh, i mean the citroen did the same thing this morning i walked out of here and i said confidently walking out here to the Citroen. At least I know I'm going to the Citroen now. It's the most reliable car in our bigger sort of collection. Yeah. Get in the car and it would not start. <laughs> first time ever. That is a first. Mm. And you know what? I opened the bonnet and I slapped a few things around, closed the bonnet, got in and it started. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, it needed French swearing or something at it. That's like an Italian solution to yeah. everything. I got in there, I slapped a few people around, <laughs> everything was fine after that. Problem went away. <laughs> well, I know what happened to you on the Cape 1000, so I knew it was maybe something around the ignition uh, it's like coil. A, and, uh, like a mafia story. Yeah, I just, yeah. It, it, I mean, That's it, so funny. Yeah. I got in, I got, I jump started, yes, I had to jump start two cars in a row, both my Mazdas. <laughs> and uh, Japanese reliability. Yeah, yeah no, so I know, I just don't drive them enough. <laughs> so both batteries had died, so jump started it using another car we had and uh we anyway it went and then i didn't have a chance to drive it just so idled it for a bit wasn't enough to charge batteries so jump in again today <laughs> <laughs> so the thing i love about my Mazda mx5 is that they are beautifully simple cars they were they were really pared down to the absolute essentials of what you need for for motoring and that makes them really nice to maintain. So, so basically, what happened was you and Dave Taylor. There's a yes. there's a hill here at the office. So Hannes and Dave just pushed me down the hill, jump started the car. I love a classic that you can fix by pushing down a hill. <laughs> That's the kind of classic you want. <laughs> yeah. So um, she's running fine. We took her to Alec and back, and she's good. Lovely little thing. Mm. Yeah, the, it's the only downside of that car for me is the no aircon. But but apparently what happened was they never sold it with an aircon initially. Initially, and then the the supercharger kits that started coming out for them, one of which was developed by Mazda actually and sold in Japan by Mazda Speed. They they found a very convenient place to bolt on the supercharger, but it's also where the aircon would go. So you could choose. You could have a supercharger or you could have aircon. Sounds like a BMW obviously. triple three I story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And obviously most people decided to go for the supercharger. Mm. So <laughs> So um we so that yeah, so that little thing is supercharged. It's a Jackson Racing supercharger from the States. And um I know the previous owner, he's a real proper proper head petrol head and an excellent racing driver as well actually and he uh he really got that car right so it, it when i got it it was a one owner car from joburg garage its whole life with 40 odd thousand k's on the clock 
and um, I got it from Crossley and Webb, and they had done a lot of preventative maintenance on the car. So all the plastics, all the rubbers, all the hoses had just been redone. So that car, I bought it in 2018. I've put tires on it. I've done an oil change. It needed tires. The tires were 15 years old, which was very exciting in the wet. And <laughs> and then the it had an idling issue, and I managed to source a mass airflow sensor from Callum, that guy who builds those amazing 300 yeah. ZXs. Shame he did me a solid day eh? because I phoned Mazda. They wanted six grand for the parts. The parts not in the country. And they were going to also send it from Japan. And I'm on this awesome MX-5 owners group, which started by one of your former colleagues, actually, Sudhir. And I messaged the guys. I'm like, guys, please, can anyone help me with the, with the math? And then uh, Callum's like, yeah, I've got one spare. You can have it. Boom. Done. Like, s that car runs beautifully now. That was the only thing wrong with that car, was the, was the mass airflow sensor. So in four years, I think I've spent 12 grand on that car. And it's just been a delight to own, like a real, real delight to own. So I, I would, if, if, if I was to recommend someone to get into the classic game, I would say look for a nice Mazda. They're around. Um, the, yeah. the only issue is parts are cheap, except they're all in America and the UK. <laughs> Shipping is not cheap. <laughs> There's tons of parts, yeah. just not in South Africa. So, But what's so nice is we're on this group and we all help each other. So for instance, I needed... Um, Oh, I spent some money on the diff side shaft seals, right? It's a 20 pound part, 400 bucks. Um, and uh, to ship it here is like 5,000. Right? Yeah, to ship it was like another 400 bucks. But I, I went on the group and someone was ordering parts from the site that I was ordering from. So we shared the shipping, you know? And it's like, that's, that's what I love about classic car com the, the communities is you, you become like part of like a tribe, you know? And everyone's in the same boat. So, so even if I don't know, even wow. if you don't like, even if you don't like each other, you still everyone still helps each other. You know, it's it's really. So cool. I'm um, in the Subaru group, obviously, and it's the most active WhatsApp group that I'm on. Which, <laughs> it it that says something. I mean that it never stops. So my Subaru is a bit ropey inside. Yeah. Put it that way. So um, it, it, it stood in the sun for a long time. So I, I need the wood trim pieces, which is actually plastic. Oh, right. Looks like wood. Well, you know, <laughs> tries to. Not wood that I've seen before. <laughs> anyway, um, I need new wood trim pieces. So I go on, on, on my support group. I thought, hey, guys, um, where can I find these wood trim pieces? And the one response is, you will not even find that in the museum, Subaru Museum in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, some some people break into museum to steal art. Hannes breaks into <laughs> museum to steal a, an SVX plastic wood trim so, for his so dashboard. I, so I, I, th I think the only option that I have is to buy one of the only other SVXs <laughs> in the country because <laughs> they're so cheap. <laughs> And amalgamate. There is one the, for sale. The, eh? I know the, the the ultimate SVX from the parts available in South Africa, <laughs> and turn the other one into that. I showed you that video of, of that sick. Oh, black, with the Tesla black wheels. Black with the Tesla yeah. wheels. Dropped. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Beautiful. Not, I'm not a guy for tune cars, but that really. But yeah, both of your cars actually look like spaceships. Like when when I was coming back in the MX-5. See the Opel GT. <laughs> Uh, I was at the intersection by the office and you, you sort of cut across from the car wash and like that DS just looks out of this world. And it's, I mean, it's, it's ancient, but it still looks futuristic. And the SVX is the same for me, but it's more of like a, the, the obviously the DS is older, but the, the so the Subaru has got this sort of 80 spaceship <laughs> vibe about it. But that was a Gigaro, eh? Yes, I never know Gigaro, how yeah. pronounce that. Yeah. Correct, and, and, the, and the Opel GT, uh, I, I, re I recently learned, a lot of people call the Opel GT the, the, the little brother of the C3 Corvette Stingray. Yes, I remember saying that to you, it's got Corvette vibes. But now I've learned that if you go back into the GM archives, that it seems like the Opel was designed first. Oh, wow. And it is actually the Corvette that is the inspired the, the, the by copy. the Opel GT, because... Wow. 
the Corvette C3 Stingray project was actually called Project Opal within GM. Oh, wow. Yeah. Shit, that's cool. That's a really I don't know how true that is. Uh, I saw it on the YouTube. That's really cool <laughs> car, car <laughs> trivia. Yeah. But anyway, um, let's talk a little bit about new cars because we yeah. also drive some new cars. Yes. Um, We've got quite a collection at the moment. Really? Well, there's RS3 and a Golf, oh. Golf 8R at the moment. Oh, those don't do anything. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, I don't know. When you start talking a million rand, I, I immediately start thinking of numerous vehicles I could buy well, and put in my collection. I worked out, I worked out what, I, what I bought all my cars for. The RS3 we have on test, I could buy all my cars twice <laughs> for, the, for, le- for about the same yeah. as that RS3. So the RS3 we have is spec to 1.42 million, 229,000 rand worth of options. And, which and, is a whole car. Yeah, and, and, I, and I get that it's a it's a very good car. It's a very fast car. It's... I don't know what else to say, really. <laughs> it's the one we have is spec weirdly, hey? With the chrome beading and those wheels don't work for me. And it just looks like... It, uh, I don't know. It looks very... It's not very cohesive. What what's, And I think, I think the Audi RS3s, what's cool about them is that they come in those very vivid colors, you know, so they're like, looks like an angry smarty, you know, like it, it needs to mm. stand out. And ours is very demure and I don't know, like a, like a, uh, you know, a really successful retired op, like optometrist spectre. Well, when it arrived here, <laughs> I thought it was an S3 and that the RS3 would follow because <laughs> the S3 guy is delivering the RS3, but it turns out that's... Yeah, the spec we have... I actually was saying to the guys, I was saying, I want to film that car, but I don't want to film that car, the one we mm. have. I want them to send me one of those angry highlighter green. Yes. You yeah, know. I, I mean, It's called Kyle Army Green. Mm. You know? That's so cool. That is cool. Yeah. And, but what, and you're driving up? Oh, the Golf R. Yeah. I think the one we have is the one we filmed in PE. Um, These people seem to I, be so excited about that car. Yo, with the guy, no, the, the, the car wash nearly lost his mind. Actually, I was looking at him through the windscreen and he couldn't see me. And as he saw the car, he just went, what the f-? Mm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know, maybe it's an age thing or something, but I've, uh, yeah. So here's yeah. a potentially controversial opinion. Oh, I've yeah. driven both of them now quite extensively. I, if I had the money, I think I'd have the Golf. And I'd, I I think I can explain why. Um, I? <laughs> I was still... <laughs> you know, be, behind the Golf R at Wingfield Motors when you parked it, there's a silver Porsche Cayenne from yes. 2012. Yeah. Uh, Very Cayenne nice. S, V8. Cayennes are starting to appeal to me a lot. 130,000 rand. So less than half of the price. Of yes, the golf worth one hundred and thirty thousand k's. On wow, with which motors in there? The V eight. Yeah. Which what what V eight was that? The Por- I don't know Porsches too well because I know they share. Sometimes they share with engines with Audi and VW. Sometimes they don't. They've got bespoke no, it, it, bespoke it, it, engines and. Yeah, that that was I think the. I think that was the engine. Was it a four four point eight twin turbo? No, it wasn't turbo. It wasn't turbo. No, NA? No, it's mainly stressed. Really? Yeah. Ah, you see, now an NA V8 appeals mm. to me. Nice, big, unstressed engine. Mm. So a friend of mine, you know Mark, he, he's looking, so he's a, he's an off-roader kind of guy. So he's got free, two Freelanders. And he, um, he found this Cayenne and he's been inspired by guys who are starting to get into these like Gen 1 Cayennes. And he nearly pulled the trigger. And before he did, he phoned around. Porsche Porsche service was a third of the price of his Land Rover service, a third, and parts seem cheaper as well than Land Rover parts. Yeah, it's kind of the feeling. I look, I would still love a, a, a Disco Four. Oh, I, 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 I love a Disco Four. I love a Disco Four, but I'm shit scared to be mm. honest. Uh, so I, I'm increasingly tempted by a Cayenne like that, a second gen Cayenne. Do you like yeah, the so second, eh? Yeah, the second I, I think gen. I think the, the they made a big step from Cayenne one to two, and from two to three it wasn't such a big step. So the Cayenne two actually still looks mm. like quite modern and cool, 
but I, it's just such a lovely car to drive. It's rock solid, and and to be honest, I think I need a um, like reliable recreational <laughs> five seat. <laughs> you got car. kids with surfboards and I do kids and bags and with friends with surfboards <laughs> and rabbits and chickens and a cat. Yo, you have unique car owner problems. I do. Got to transport a chicken coop every Decem- now and then. December holidays is uh, a massive challenge. If you I, have, <laughs> I have to take my hat off to Ash, who organizes me a car every year. If and, you and when he can't, then the Etigo steps in. But yeah, it's a challenge. Yeah. If you buy a Cayenne and you transport chickens in it, we have to make a video about that. That is hilarious. So. Uh, so how old do chickens get? How old do chickens get? Yeah. Well, I, I learned something quite interesting recently. A chicken that you eat, generally like in a fast food chain or something like that, has probably been alive for about 50 days, 52 days. That's when they get killed. So, well, I guess then you can't eat my chickens anymore. Because <laughs> I think... How old are your so chickens? chickens? <laughs> Let me try and calculate this now. I, th- I think the oldest one must be at least nine years old. Nine? Yeah. It's blind in one eye. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one leg is gray and the other one is orange. Wow. So, yeah. so but anyway, so that chicken is bloody nine years old. It, it, it doesn't lie egg anymore. I, I don't know why we have them. I wish somebody would steal them. <laughs> to be honest, it's almost it's almost December holidays, guys. Please help me out. So, so but okay, but wait. Why do? Okay, so let's separate the issues here. You own chickens for no, whatever, no, no, for whatever reason. No, I don't own chickens. Okay, I, I just you are a chicken caretaker. Deal with the consequences involuntarily. Yes, you're a chicken caretaker. Very much so. Right. <laughs> so, but then why do? What is the what is the reason for the chickens needing to be in a car? Because when we uh, go to my parents for Christmas, yes, then there's nobody at home to look after the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so there is this. There is now in the Hurrits area a hybrid <laughs> species of rabbits <laughs> because. We take this female rabbit. No, initially we took this male rabbit, but you know, normal like household pet kind of rabbit yeah. size. But the rabbits in Hurrits are like freaking with the ears <laughs> upright. They can, they look it's huge. Like an Alsatian. <laughs> yeah. So they are now this, this uh, <laughs> a rabbit explosion. <laughs> this is your <laughs> fault. <laughs> so, so you take it on the same journey. It's you, the missus, your kids, yes. the chickens, yes. the rabbits, yes. the cat. Yes. In the car. In the car. <laughs> <laughs> the challenge. And then, then you add surfboards, bicycles. Uh, I don't think... And, and, and remember, my wife, you know, she likes her vegetables. So oh, multiple boxes of round things, which don't pack well. Yes, that is one of the funniest... I like... I get asked for car buying advice a lot, but if you came to me and you're like, hi, Jared, here's my lifestyle and here's what I need a car to do. I'd be like, sorry, the number you have dialed is unavailable. Well, the perfect car is parked outside. What, the Zafira? The Opel Zafira Light, yeah. actually. That does look quite good, eh? Um, yeah, it's... It's the right size, which is the most important thing because you can take seven people and and they can be adults and you have massive boot space and you have a tow bar. So, so this Zafira, would you say, I mean, what, what is, what's in that segment? Combi, V-Class. So V-Class is like 300,000 rand more. Oh, really? What's the Zafira? How much does it cost? This one is a top spec, 902,000 rand. So it's cheaper than a combi. The combis are yes. over a million now. Yes. The nice ones. The caravels. Yeah. yeah. Do they sell a Ford Taneo anymore? I don't think they do. 
It's still on the list. Is it? But, uh, but I don't know if it's accurate. Because that, that and, the, and there's, an, there's the Staria, which is really nice. The Staria is really nice and you yeah. can get Starias with panel m- more seats area. or less seats mm. or luxury or less. So there's more options. And, and, the, and, the, and the Zafira Life's got a weird spec where you you have massaging seats. Wow. Yeah. For so both front seats. Wow. In so, a bus. So would you, I mean, given your unique requirements <laughs> would you actually buy a bus though like would you consider it like actually spending your own money on it so you know a lot of people ask me what is my dream car and then they expect me to say porsche 996 f- whatever GT3. ferrari 488 <laughs> tribute to a pagani's on it whatever my dream car is actually a Kia carnival <laughs> <laughs> that is a very nice car though yeah those are really nice because they're not the, the driving experience is not bus ish exactly. not too bus ish it's more suv ish yeah, it's like but a, then you get the space yes so it's it's a sophisticated luxury high tech all features i mean for example this this zafira has seven seats but it's only got one usb port in the whole car in the whole car oh no that's just an argument waiting to happen really. <laughs> look there are 12 volt plugs everywhere where you can put in an, adap- yeah. an adapter and sort it out but the zafira is i mean the, the the carnival is just straight off the bat for the money i think the most car the the most value in terms of my lifestyle that i can get from a car at that price even with seven seats it's it's I mean, the boot at the back, it, it goes deep because the, when the seats fall flat, they fall into that hole. Oh. So there's like a massive hole. You can stack it high. In the in the carnival. In the carnival, mm. yeah. Mm. So I I um, I actually much prefer a Kia Carnival solution to, for example, what most people buy as a Toyota Fortuner or Ford Everest or, or, or those kind of cars because they don't have so yeah. much packing space for sit, you know, once the seats are taken. Those cars aren't massively practical. But the Fortuna has something going for it, and then you, you have the option to remove that, that, that those back bench, those two fold up seats completely. With spanners, though. Mm. But but then you get that depth, which is nice. That sure. the Everest doesn't have, and the Mitsubishi doesn't have, and all the rest of it. Yeah, but you, <coughs> I mean, with the Kia, it's kind of you don't even have to think about it. Yeah, I mean, it's the same price yeah. basically as a Fortuna or Everest these days. Do you know? Do you know what car I liked in that Bucky-based SUV segment, and it didn't last long? Was a Nissan Pathfinder. I actually thought that was a nice car, and they're going for. No one seems to want them very much. I found a very decent one for 140 grand, and I was like, "That's like a really, yeah. you know, that's like a sort of a, like what I call like a throwabout car. Like, if I like pull into a driveway and I scratch it, I'm like, whatever, you know, you you, you don't care yeah. too much about it. No, I agree, and, yeah. and and they've aged quite well because of that styling. It's a sort yes. of blocky and squared off. Yeah, it's quite they're kind of cool. But yeah. Kind of. yeah, No, I agree. I like I like them. Um, good good motor in that as well. I think you could get you could get the four liter V six, or you could get I think a three liter turbo diesel, which was quite a nice motor. Yeah, the yeah. diesel is the one to have. But yeah, I agree. You know, something like that, you can, like this video we we released today with uh, with a Cayenne mm. Overlander. You know, you don't mind it getting a bit of a scratch. Yeah. And some road rash and so on. I think that's what I need next. It's nice not to be precious about a car. Mm. It actually makes life a bit more relaxing, to be mm. honest. It's like one of the reasons I bought the Lexus, although I'm a bit precious about it now. To Just be wanted honest, to say because I like, yeah. like it so much. But I mean, it's it's already when I bought it, it had a couple of things. Like there was a couple of things really annoyed me. The bumper was pretty badly scratched. I had that panel beaten and resprayed. Really good place called Garage Seventy Two in Joburg. I really recommend them. And the boot had a very bad, so, so sort of on the corner of the boot, you know, where the like the ni- the ninety degree big ding there. And I was like, I can't live with that. That's going to annoy me. So boot off, fully resprayed. Beautiful job. You would never know it's been resprayed. And we had to save the badge. The badge, the Alice 400 badge. The gold badge. Yeah, the gold badge, which was an optional extra back in the day, had a crack in it. And 
the guy said, do you want us to try source you a badge? And I was like, no, because... Can you just super glue it? Yeah, so, so we did. We saved it. But because if you... Like, you've got the, the Lexus badge, which is faded, right? So it's got this, like, lovely gold fade to it now. And then you're going to put this new gold thing on and it's going to look ridiculous it's going to look like i bought it from like i got it in a lucky packet or something so <laughs> so he's so like I, I, so i'm like no please <laughs> the boy's lucky packet yeah oh, you know like that boring. chintzy yeah. you know fake gold so i said guys please try save it and they did they saved the badge because it obviously had to come off to spray the, the boot, and then they, they saved the badge for me, and I'm very grateful. And you, I mean, you can see the, the crack in it, but it doesn't bother me that much, you know. But but the point is, like, I needed, I was tired of taking Ubers. Like, I, I don't want to be in, like, some banged-up Etios anymore. Oh God, like, no. I'm so done with that. The quality of Uber X's has just become rubbish. Uber Black's pretty expensive. So I'm like, you know what? I want something interesting. I live 10Ks from, excuse me, from work. I just want to be able to get home and back in one piece and that lexus is probably one of the greatest cars i've ever known like in all my dad was a bit of a car guy and he had mercs and my uncle had mercs and my other uncle had beamers but like we never had lexuses in the family so this is the first time i've experienced them yeah <laughs> and it's just it really deserves all the praise that it gets the yeah. motor and everything starts first time every time it's got two hundred eighty-seven thousand k's on the clock Drove it down from Joburg, no problems. One of the greatest drives, and and I'm 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 not too precious about it, which I which I really really like. But my God, is it thirsty? I think it costs me because I live quite high up the mountain in Seapoint, and I think it costs me fifty rand to get to Seapoint, and then another fifty rand to get from the bottom of Seapoint to the top of Seapoint, where I live. <laughs> that guy is awful. When, when petrol was at its most expensive, so it's got an 85 liter tank, I filled the tank. There was there was a couple. Of, there was one big petrol jump coming up, and I I'm like I'm gonna fill it just before this big jump happens. And I did some maths, and the value of my car went up 3.8 percent with a full tank of fuel. Try try spinning that when you sell the car. Yeah, I could have listed it as a as like a you know an option comes with a full tank, full tank of it fuel, reminds which me, will last you three days. And this is a confession from the very far distant past. When I just became a motoring journalist, before I was with Car Magazine, I, got, uh, I, I started something called Gully Motor Media with uh, Dr. Hans Jesse to service the sort of smaller newspapers who couldn't afford motoring journalists. So... This wonder, and you must remember now, I'm fresh out of, actually, I'm still in varsity. So I have a BMW 330Ci convertible, an Alpha 156 Sally Speed. Test cars. Test cars. Now, I live in like a complex. apartment. Complex. Yeah, or, you know, with other students. And a Deulanos. <laughs> so... And I've got all three of them for like a week. And student, you don't have money. So I got my good friend who now works at a armoring company. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's lots of those around. Mm, vehicle armoring company to suck the fuel out of the day, Lanos, <laughs> and put it into the BMW and Alpha so that I could drive those a bit more. I, so that is a confession of a petrol head. I, <laughs> in my very early days in car journalism, for some reason, Audi gave me the V10 manual R8 oh, in white. And I ran out of petrol in 24 hours. And then I was so broke that I couldn't afford to put more fuel in it and i was too proud to ask anyone so i just made sure it had enough fuel to get back to the fleet manager and i parked it by my flat and um stared at it for the next six days <laughs> <laughs> it's like owning an electric car basically at the moment <laughs> that was that was my r8 experience but actually that was my second r8 experience because i had this wonderful mistake happen to me you know sometimes in life these mistakes happen in your favor so um the the fleet manager of, of that particular fleet i mean it's really 
wonderful person. She's been great to me over the years. She phones me and she says, I mean, I think I'm 20 at this stage, 21, just started my website. And there's this massive hype around this Audi. There's billboards everywhere and it's Audi's first supercar and blah, blah, blah. And uh, she phones me and says, oh, your R8's ready. So I said, really? She says, yeah, yeah, come pick it up. I'm like there. I'm like, let's drop everything. I'm at that at that <laughs> fleet place in 45 minutes. Get in this black, brand new R8, brand, brand new, manual H-gate. And I'm like, fuck off into the, into the sunset. <laughs> and then about two hours later, my phone rings and it's the fleet manager. She says, your name's not Peter, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, no. So she says, oh, that car was booked for the editor of Men's Health, which was a massive magazine at the time, 15 years ago. And uh, she says, but you know what? I feel bad. I'm not going to take it away from you. Enjoy it. That's Keep it for the week. And I had the best freaking week of my life. <laughs> oh, that car was special. And the amount of hype. I mean, people, I remember, I, I don't know, I found some money and I filled up the tank. And uh, as part, I was at this petrol station. There's this crowd just formed around the car, like 30 people. You know, everyone get like parked, got out their cars, come, and that car really caused a stir when it came out. So yeah, that was a that was a nice nice little error in my, fa- in my favor. <laughs> when when the Audi TT first came out, the first generation TT, it was also like a spaceship mm. like basically, and uh, it was one of my first test cars. Still, it's still a Bosch. I remember at the mall. Uh, picking up a friend from a club quite late at night and I'm parked there idling and the window is open. You know the window on the first gen TT opens like that much. It's like a a bunker. And this drunk Stellenbosch student comes up to me and he puts his arms on the window frame and says, Are you from space? (laughs) I actually have quite a, I actually have quite a similar story to that. When I was very young, a friend of a friend shot all the music videos. When remember MKTV, it was like quite big. It was yes. they played all those music videos. So all those bands like Fuck Off, Police Car, and Aching, and yeah, Eagles yeah. Fantastis, and they were all mates. And then we became mates. And I used to help them with their music videos. And then um, they were gigging one night in Stellenbosch. And I don't know Stellenbosch very much. I yeah. grew up in Joburg. I'm like young. Merck, for some reason, gave me an SL63 AMG, the, the, the one, the big, That'll do it. yeah, the big 6.2 <laughs> silver, beautiful thing. Yeah. So I'm pulling into Sedenbosch, and I'm a bit lost, and I pull into this parking lot, roll down the window, and there's this big, I don't know, I think you have to be of a certain size to go to Sedenbosch University. You have to be, like, able to pull a plow on your own, I think, single-handedly. So this, like, enormous kid. It looks like he hadn't even started shaving yet, but he was the size of a portaloo. <laughs> and he and he like leans in the window, and I'm like, "Hey, I'm like, I'm looking for this place." So he gives me directions, and as I'm about to leave, he goes, "Yet a manier, but you had a fucking lacquer car." <laughs> <laughs> like, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he thought I was like, I don't know if he thought I was this out of town. It was probably on GP plates because all yeah, the test cars are on GP yeah. plates. And, and anyway, he just had to drop that compliment in just before I left. And it actually made my whole night. It was so cool. <laughs> so, Chiro, to, to close things off for the yeah. first episode. Yeah. Can you explain to us what MTAX is? MTAX. Yeah. So, I haven't driven my M5 for two months because I... I was overseas. I was on, I think I went to Formula E and I phoned Alec and I said, Hey man, can you please do an oil change in my, in the M5 for me? So he came to get it and he phoned me straight away in London on WhatsApp. And he says, how long have you been driving a car like this? I said, well, since I bought it and like I've driven it to nice and then back. I've been on car runs. Michelle chased me up Red Hill in her Porsche in the M5. And he says, I can hear your timing change slapping around in your engine. He's like, if you have a mistiming event in this car, you basically throw the head away and that's what cost you more than the entire car is worth to import, import that from Germany. So he says, 
he was like i could see he was like visibly shaken he says do not drive your car so i've taken his his word for it so it's in i cleaned it and it's in it's undercover in storage and then and the the parts bill um you can only get the parts from bmw for that engine so it's the parts bill is 35k and <laughs> and i don't know what the labor is going to be but but we're going to do so while Alec had the car, he got underneath it. The prop shaft coupling is torn in six places, uh, and, the, and the diff's leaking from the side shaft. So we're going to do. Oh, so we're going to do diff out, side shafts out, prop out, engine out, and we're going to do the rear main seal while while we're in there, um, and the fog light covers <laughs> for thirty five grand. And then that car. I mean, look, it's a high miler. I bought it with one hundred and eighty five thousand k's on the clock. But it was a two hundred car. So I knew I knew something was going to come. But I got it for a really good price, and I think they're appreciating yeah. really nicely those E39. So I'm willing to spend some money on it. I was just waiting for a bit of money to come in, and I'll, I'll do it. But I think you know when I bought that car, I said to myself like, if, if something goes wrong and I can't fix it, it's fine. Like it's a long term view, you know. And it was also just this really. I've always really wanted one of those. I've always thought Absolutely. since I since I saw that rocket car ad, which was shot in 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 South Africa by a South African director. I just thought that was one of the coolest cars in the world. So I'm super happy that I own one and it's going to cost me some money now, but it's fine. I don't know. You make peace with these things, you know, and it's still, I still bought it for less than the cost of a Polo Vivo. So I've uh, got an E39. Amen to that. <laughs> Cheers. Jeez, like, okay. I think that <laughs> is the out. end. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We've run out of wine. That's the end of the Thanks, show. Thanks guys. See you next yeah. time. Thanks for watching yeah. and check out, check out the rest of Vanessa's um, videos. This, this man, I called him the Oracle for a reason. He's been doing this a long time. <laughs> Thanks so much.